Let's bring out the sexiest crime fighters from The Rock. Let's see him. I came out for his abs today. That got me out in the cold. Mr. Alan Hocko, Christian Calleran, and Mark O'Brien. Hi. 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 How y'all doing? Hey. Hey guys. Alan, how did you get here? What did it take to get here? Well, uh, for everyone knows that Toronto's been frozen in, and Newfoundland was the second to fall to that kind of frozen in thing. We were in blackouts and snowstorms, but last night I just managed to get on a plane at the last minute, and I arrived at four o'clock this morning, Toronto time. So thanks for having me. Well, you look fresh and great as always. We actually have a photo from your Instagram account. He's at Real Alan Hocko on Instagram of the snowfall in Newfoundland. Can yeah. you see that? It's, can you tell us, set up this photo? Um, <laughs> there you are. Do you see him? There he is. And can you explain what we're looking at? I just love that comment. Holy snow, Batman. <laughs> I also love uh, the great work that your stunt double is doing in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great... That's my, uh, that's my mother's backyard or back door, and I went into my mother's house and um, after the blackout and I brought her in some supper and, she, and I saw that mom and dad's back window was completely covered in snow and I thought, if anything's going to give them cabin fever, it'll be that. Plus, if there was a fire or whatever, so I shoveled it How up. long did that take you? Uh, a good while because that's the deck, but the, I had to shovel out the other part of the house where the windows were too. So it was, a long, uh, it was a long few hours, but it's a good workout. Yeah, too bad yeah. you're not yeah. shooting. That's a good <laughs> workout <laughs> yeah. for all the seats. Yeah. Uh, how did uh, you get in here? I heard you had a little bit of trouble too. I finished packing my bag at 10.30 at night and the lights went completely out. Holyrood shut down and I got up at 4.30 in the morning in the dark with a flashlight and made it to the airport and the flight got out. It was two hours delayed, but it was crazy. Wow. Um, did everyone see the last episode of Republic of Doyle here? Woo! Did anyone gasp like I did at the very end of it? Can you, can you just remind us where we are right now? So uh, tonight obviously is the uh, second half of season five. It airs tonight at nine o'clock, 9.30 in Newfoundland obviously. Uh, and at the end of, just before Christmas, we had a, a great episode, but at the very end of the episode, it seems like Malachi, my, guy, my father, got in a bit of trouble, he ended up getting shot at the very last second, so we picked that up uh, tonight at 9. Mark, you've been shot on the show before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and Alan, as you all know, is also one of the writers of the show, he's the creator, he's the executive producer, uh, as an actor and a friend of Alan's, what does it feel when he shoots you? Feels like Alan is living out his dream. <laughs> um, it, uh, you know, the first time I did it, I actually had a vest on, like, the, like Des had a vest on, and it was like, it was the most pressure-filled situation because we were losing light. Remember that day? We were losing light, and I had to hit this mark, and I had to get shot. So when I actually hit it, and it actually blew, like the squib blew and everything, I felt like I was shot. And, really? Uh, I tried to actually shoot him. I've been trying to kill Mark for <laughs> yeah. years. Yeah, but he did give me uh, CPR and mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. <laughs> wasn't necessary. But... How much of your own stunts do you do? Because we've talked a little bit about this, and you're into doing your own stunts. Yeah, I try to do all my own stunts, but I have a great stunt double uh, who isn't shoveling my mother's backyard. <laughs> uh, Zach Hocko is not related to me, believe it or not. And he does, like, the... He's, you know, 24, 25. He's made of rubber, so... He can do certain, uh, the big, 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 massive stuff that I don't have time to do or don't want to do. And Mark doesn't do any of his own stunts. Yeah, yeah. I actually normally get someone else to come into set as me. <laughs> it's just a lot easier for everybody involved. Uh, no, I, I used to do, I mean, I, I do do most of my own, almost all of them. Um, but I used to find, like, in the first season, sometimes it's like, oh, you fall off a chair. And you're like, oh, I can do that. But after you do it 15 <laughs> times, you're like, Alan had to give me CPR and mouth-to-mouth. <laughs> Kristen, you said you, you like fighting. You like the fight choreography. I really like doing it. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting better at it, <laughs> but it's really fun. You're great. Gets you all revved up. Yeah. Uh, can you remind our audience how you two first met in life? In real life? Yeah. At NTS. At Which a... is? National Theatre School of Canada. Yeah. I saw Kristen uh, play The Fool in a production of King Lear when she was in her second year at National Theatre School. I was graduated, and... Uh, when I saw her, I knew right away that she was a superstar. Great. And what was it like to get the call from Alan to do this 
major national show for the CBC. It was a dream, like I just, it's a dream part and I just feel so lucky to be a part of it and I'm so glad that we get to act together. How'd you find this guy? <laughs> Out back. <laughs> Mark was living in my backyard for years. Uh, we did a movie together called Above and Beyond and uh, again, the minute that I met Mark, uh, I knew that I wanted to work with him again and as much as possible. But I remember when Alan called, when, when the show actually went, he called and I was, uh, I was working as a server and uh, it wasn't my dream. And, uh, and Alan called and he said, uh, we gotta sh you don't have to work as a server anymore. And if we get another season, you'll never have to work as a server again. And, uh, which has been great, except he still makes me serve him personally. But <laughs> I don't count that. But then randomly one day in Toronto, I was in Toronto on College Street having lunch and I looked across, out the window and we had just been ordered. We just got the call for our first full season, not the pilot, the first full season. And I look across the street and over at the uh, sub, uh, streetcar shelter is Mark O'Brien dressed in his like waiter clothes and he looks depressed. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like February and you were like standing there kicking the rocks on the road. <laughs> and I ran out on the road and I was like, Mark, what the, are you doing? Yeah. I saw you there. I wanted you to see me upset, so I was doing one of those. I was kicking the rock. I was like, oh my. Like, it's not going to work out for me. Yeah. So then I, you would definitely write me in every episode. The pathos, it works yeah, for it you. Yeah, it worked. With these yeah. headsets, we feel like we should be doing dance moves. Yeah. Yeah. Which Guys. I almost did. Quit just bands. But anyway, I told him to quit. Yeah. Quit, quit, quit. I, I think I did quit like that day. I went and I said, I don't want this job anymore. And they're like, why are you so mean? Like, Alan Hago made me. Live season now. We were very excited to have you here today. So we decided to look back at season one, episode one. Does anyone remember that? Oh, oh yeah, we remember that. Uh, the, and what we wanted to see was the first moment between Jake and Leslie. Do you remember that? Let's take a look I at that. I remember that. Oh, where are you going, sir? Can we help you? Yeah, uh, I could use your uh, help. It's okay. I know him. Jake, meet Constable Leslie Bennett. Nice to meet you, Constable. Leslie. Jake Doyle, pet detective. <laughs> oh, Pike, you are hilarious. What do you want, Mr. Doyle? Please call me Jake, and I'm a private detective, and I'm actually working the Brian Harris assault. It's an ongoing case, Jake. <laughs> He's so smart. Yeah, I know that. Hi, thanks. Actually, were you just checking me out? Excuse me? You were just... You were totally checking me out. No? Did you see that? Okay, you weren't checking me out. <laughs> and now, five seasons later, you're yeah. still working it out. Still hot together in scenes, but still we're dying to see what's finally going to happen. What can you tell us about where Jake and Leslie are at? I had swine flu in that scene. <laughs> I'm not joking. It's I had real. swine flu. He did. Wow. He did. Hot. That was one of the... <laughs> yeah, I know. Are you checking me out? Good I got for you. He's like, work with it. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was almost dying, and it was one of the worst days. Anyways, uh, but it was no, a great No, what day. other ailments do you have? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, what did you ask me? Where, what is going to happen with Jake and Leslie? Like, they're, you've thrown a lot in their way this season. Well, we just finished the cut of uh, 15 and 16, the last two episodes of the, the, last two episodes of the season, which is like a two-hour finale. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be very cool. What's the date on the two-hour finale, do you know? February 8th? Just before the Olympics. Just before the Olympics. Okay. Just for the Olympics, and uh, a lot happens. And <laughs> Great! It's so exciting. I just yeah. I just watched the the final lock cut of it the other day, and it's the two best episodes of television we've ever made. And uh, I I don't know what I'm allowed to, what I should tell you because I don't want to give anything away. But okay, I'll, I'll take over from here. Okay. Every character has swine flu. And that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. All and right. everybody's checking each other out. <laughs> I'm, also, I'm also happy that uh, Tini and Des are, are together yeah. now. That makes me very happy. Is that fun for you guys? Yeah, it is, it is actually really nice uh, because I think it was drawn out really long in, in a good way because you saw them... <laughs> what are you laughing? It was drawn out really long. It was drawn out really long. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was good because it, it means more when they actually do get together. So I thought it was good that they each had their own relationships and stuff like that. 
And it is nice, and I think, um, and myself and Martha, Bernard, like we work on it a lot, and we talk about it a lot to make it, like they're a comfortable couple, because they've known each other so long. So, yeah, I think it's great. What's it like when you all have to kiss? It's amazing. Me and Mark? <laughs> is that coming in the, the two hour season? I don't like mouth to mouth again, Alan. I, didn't I told you it's an amazing two episodes. <laughs> and we already had swine flu, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, we have another exciting episode coming up. Of course, there's tonight. We all need to know what happens in the immediate future to Malky. And then uh, the crossover episode with Murdoch Mysteries. Can you explain to everyone uh, how you went onto their show and now Yannick is on yours? Yeah, you guys watch Murdoch Mysteries on CBC? Wicked. Uh, Mark's wife is on the, the Murdoch Mysteries. Georgina Riley. Yeah. Uh, Georgina had already been on our show, otherwise we would have had her in the crossover too. But Pete Mitchell, the showrunner for uh, Murdoch Mysteries, proposed an idea of having uh, Jacob Doyle, Jake's great-great-grandfather, and we did that episode, and it was a lot of fun. And then Perry Chafe and I, the co-showrunner, co-creator with me, we wrote an episode that uh, has William Murdoch's great grandson, something, whatever. So <laughs> Bill Murdoch. Bill, Billy Murdoch shows up on Republic of Doyle, which is a lot of fun. And uh, Yannick is a great guy. We had a great time. Uh, it was a lot of fun. So it's okay. Cool. Uh, you brought us a little bit of a preview of this. So do you guys want to see a preview of that crossover episode? All right, let's take a look. Did you bring the preview? No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Jake's half blind, and you're a stranger to us, so why don't we all just stop fighting? Is it just me, or does it feel like we've done this before? I don't know. Maybe it all happened in another life, hey, boy. Mm. That's awesome. I that can't cool. wait. That's cool. How do you all work together to come up with storylines? Because uh, you're the boss. How do these people inspire you? Uh, Kristen inspires me a great deal. And Kristen <laughs> inspires me a great deal. No, they're, they're amazing. They're great. At a certain point, in the beginning, you know, when we were creating characters and the plots and whatnot, uh, you're kind of imagining it all in yourself, in your head, in the writer's room, we're putting it all together. But eventually these actors, these amazing actors, take over these characters and they start to inform you uh, uh, immensely as to what the trajectory of those characters are going to be. And they've taken full ownership and they're, aren't they amazing? Aren't they the best They are the best. The they're really great. Um, I guess... Uh, Mark inspired you for something this season. We we love getting to see Alan shirtless in the show, right? It's some of like <laughs> the best moments in television ever. Can we bring up a photo? Can uh, I get a photo of that on oh, all wow. these monitors, please? <laughs> Peter Mooney. Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, someone's gonna bring up a photo, and in a second, this is the time where you can get ready to start asking your questions. All right, so then. We, okay, we'll skip the photo of you, and we'll go straight to Mark. Yeah. Uh, did you ask for this? Were you like, please, Alan, I, can I have one this year? I asked to pose just like that, because uh, that's actually my headshot. <laughs> they framed in another guy and a pole there. Um, no, Alan, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Uh, I called you and said, if you're fat, lose some weight. Yeah, yeah, basically, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you get advance notice? I did get advance notice, yeah, yeah. How so, much? Um, I could have ruined his life, because he has to do whatever I say. I know. And then I can show up, like I could have been pumping, and then I show up, and he's like, oh, we cut that scene. So anything could have happened, but my stunt double did some great work, and <laughs> the people in the post-production department put my head on his body really good. And, um, <laughs> did and you also get the Alan Hocko uh, workout plan with that? No, Script? that's in a sealed vault in, like, Sacramento, in, like, <laughs> somewhere. Sacramento? <laughs> Whatever. I don't know. All right. Uh, do we have some questions from social media? I know we do, because we, have you been seeing the tweets? I have. This is Leah Collins from our team, CBC Connects. David Mosgrove one tweeted, why aren't there any winter scenes on Republic of Doyle? Because we don't shoot in the winter. 
It sucks shooting in the winter in Newfoundland. Jake would be shoveling the backyard, yeah. like we yeah. just saw. The GTO flying around, the <laughs> yeah. salt yeah. stained Getting streets into of St. John's. Yeah, no, nice. we just shoot from May to uh, November or December. So it's too hard to shoot in the winter, and it, it doesn't work well for our, uh, when we air. It's just we'd be shooting too much while we're airing, and it just happens that way. All right, well, our next question is actually... Oh, hold on. We're going to get you a mic right here. Hello? Okay, we're on. Hi, Leah. Hey, everyone. You're on. Next question is actually for the lady and the adorable dog right next yeah. to me. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Hi, folks. This is Igor Pug Dog, and he has a question for you guys. When are you going to have a canine unit in the police department? We, are, we did an episode where there was a canine unit. and it, the, I know, and the dog busted uh, Rose, played by Linda Boyd, for having hash oil in her purse that she didn't know was in her purse, obviously, that, you know, some wacky circumstances led her to have a hash oil in her purse. <laughs> cool. All right, I'll take a question from social media. And again, invitation to anybody out there, if you'd like to join me right here behind the mic, we can take your question as well. Um, so this question is from Third yeah. Sea Kid on Twitter, and they're a fan of when Scott Grimes and Alan Doyle show up on the program. So they want to know, is it, what, what chance is there of seeing them again this season and in the future? If it was up to Alan Doyle, he'd be in, in a, Every time you talk to Alan Doyle about any show idea, any episode idea, any anything, he's like, you know, I could do all the music for that. <laughs> <laughs> I could star in it. I could play all the tunes. I could do all the stunts. I'll, I'll, I'm perfect for that. So if it's up to Alan, he'll be in it uh, in every episode. We're, we're going to talk about that later in a creative meeting. Great. Do we have one more question? Hi, guys. Uh, How are by you? the way, great show. Hi. I only watch sports and weather, and I stumbled upon your uh, show a few years back, and uh, I'm hooked. I'm caught up, so cool, that's great. Uh, being that you shoot most of your shows in Newfoundland, do you think of expanding the Republic of Doyle Nation, perhaps going out west and doing a few episodes, or perhaps even Toronto? Uh, we, w we, went to, we went to Mexico at the beginning of the season, which was down by the pavilion on the beach there, and, uh, Lake Ontario, but it <laughs> subbed very well for Mexico, I thought. Um, and Saint Pierre Miquelon, sort of, right? Yeah. What's that? <laughs> Saint Pierre Miquelon, you were, you were there. Oh, At, yes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I would like to. It's just that you have a, you have a very limited budget with television, particularly in, in our country. We have, uh, we want to make sure that every dollar ends up on the screen, so it's difficult to travel. But uh, I'm not saying that we would completely rule it out. I mean, it would be a lot of fun to have Des and uh, Leslie go on a case together for some random reason in Vancouver? Who knows? That's well, yeah, a good episode. Yeah. 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 It does, actually. Yeah. Des and Les and Van. Yeah. That's a good idea. I like that, yeah. It's great. <laughs> Guys, we're about to bring out our Olympic hockey broadcast team, but really quickly, I want to know, after five seasons for you guys, because you're done five, you've shot it, um, what's the best thing about this experience for you? Uh, seeing Alan with his shirt off more than once. Yeah, me it's too. Great. Kristen? <laughs> The same. <laughs> the same. Yeah. It's, everyone feels that way. They all do. Alan, you as well? <laughs> uh, <laughs> seeing Kristen without her shirt on. Hey, I remember what happens. That. Remember, uh, remember, it's true, remember me? Tank top. I own the show and I can never get it to happen. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Big hockey fans, right? You two? Yeah. Excited for the Olympics? Yeah. Huge. Huge. Kristen? I like figure skating. You like figure skating. <laughs> Me too. Let's watch some figure skating together. All right, so as we traveled the country this year, we asked all of uh, the CBC stars what their favorite moment of Olympic history was ever, and there was one resounding uh, moment. So let's take a look at what that was in just a second. But first, let's say thank you to these guys. Thank you so much. January 15th is the crossover episode. Uh, and tonight, we'll find out what happens next in Republic of Doyle. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.